welcome to Loving the Scriptures. I'm your host, your friend, Joshua Olunlade, and together we'll be exploring God's Word to find insights, learn from Him, and to fall more deeply in love with Him today. Let's begin. Shall we say a word of prayer? Our Father and our God, we say a big thank you for the opportunity that I have given unto us to be here again today. We are grateful and thankful because your word is always opened up unto us. Lord, we are thankful. We say let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. If there is any way that we have sinned against you, Lord, we are sorry. Please forgive us, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you would open up your word to us this morning and you would let us learn from you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. So welcome again to this episode of the podcast. Today we are going to be studying from the book of John chapter 1 verse 35 to 42. In the previous episode, we studied from the book of John chapter 1 verse 29 to 34 and we see the Lamb of God revealed. John spoke, John said, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And we see how John identifies the Lamb of God. He didn't identify him by his facial expression or by the way he walked or by the way he talked or by the works that he did. John identified the Lamb of God, the Son of God, by the Spirit of God that descended upon him. And we established that it is the Spirit of God upon us that makes us children of God. It is the Spirit of God within us that cries, Abba, Father. Now today we will be studying from the book of John chapter 1 verse 35 to 42. And I will start by reading the text, then we are going to discuss some interesting things I found in the scriptures and finally I'm going to leave you to allow the scriptures to be in your heart and for you to be able to meditate on it so that you may be changed by the scriptures. Okay, John chapter 1 verse 35 to 42. I read. The next day, John was standing with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this and followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and noticed them following him, he asked them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come and you'll see, he replied. So they went and they saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard John and followed him. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ, and he brought Simon to Jesus. When Jesus saw him, he said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas which is translated Peter. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. So now let's just quickly look at the word that we have read today and let's pick out some of the interesting things that I found there. Now we go back to verse 35. The next day, John was standing with two of his disciples. So this is sequel to what happened in the previous episode of this podcast now. The next day John was standing with two of his disciples when he saw Jesus passing by he said look the Lamb of God so John continued to declare that Jesus was the Lamb of God it wasn't just a one-time thing John continued to declare it and this time two of his disciples heard him now what did the disciples do when they heard John they started to follow Jesus and then Jesus when he noticed that some people were following him he turned back and said "Ah, what are you looking for And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? That sparked something in my mind. They said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? Rabbi. Rabbi means teacher as the Bible text gives us. And it shows the kind of heart with which they came to Jesus. They came to Jesus with a heart to learn. They came to Jesus with a heart to to know Jesus, to learn from him, not just to receive miracles from him or to receive an anointing from him. They came to Jesus to learn because you go to a teacher to learn. So the first name that they identified Jesus by was not was not miracle worker or 
promise keeper or any of these things it was rabbi which means teacher where do you stay it also makes me to ask the questions why am i following christ am i learning from christ or am i just here to receive miracles from him and that is that is what it made me to think and prior to this we see that these disciples were disciples of john and they heard john speak and they acted based on what john said and that too touched me about the text if these disciples could act based on what john said and follow jesus based on what john said then it makes me to think who am i following what are they saying who am i listening to what are they saying and how is it affecting me where is it leading me to Am I listening to the voice of God? Am I listening to the voice of men? Am I listening to godly mentors that will teach me things that I did not know about God? Or am I just listening to social media and all its things? Who am I listening to? And what am I getting out of it? And where is it leading me to? Okay, so let's let's move on quickly. So they said to him, Teacher, where are you staying? They were ready to learn from him. And this shows us a posture of their heart and how our hearts too should be. We should come before God with a posture to learn from Him and not just to receive from Him. Because by learning from Him, that is the greatest receiving that we can get from Him. There was that story in the scriptures where Jesus visited two sisters and one of them was trying to make sure that everything was set for Jesus. She was trying to make sure that the plates were organized, you know, that the cooking was well done and everything. And the other sister came and just sat down at the feet of Jesus. And the hardworking sister came and said, Jesus, why won't you tell this my other sister to join me? And Jesus said, one thing is needful. And that is what this your sister has chosen. To learn from Jesus is what you need, what I need, what we need for life. So we should come before Jesus with an attitude, with a posture to learn. Now, we go on with the text. Come and you'll see, he replied. So they went with Jesus and they stayed with him that day. And you know, the, the next part that really, really stood out to me is when they said, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of those who heard John and followed Jesus. Now, what did he do? Verse 41 says that he first found his own brother, Simon, and told him, we have found the messiah hmm. we have found the messiah which is translated the christ and he brought simon to jesus simon was andrew's brother now andrew when he heard john speak about the messiah about the lamb of god he went and looked for his brother and said brother we have found the messiah he brings a very serious question to my mind do I call my brothers, my sisters, my family and my friends to Jesus? I do remember my own We Have Found the Messiah moment too. When I was in secondary school, my sister came home one of her semesters. She was already in university by that time. And she was playing a recorded message and I was in her room. It was by that recorded message that I began to take God seriously. I just was hearing it and it was making new sense to me beyond what I've been hearing in church all this while. Not like what I've been hearing in church was not good, but God just used those messages to really, really speak to me directly. And she was the Andrew that was calling me, Simon, saying, we have found the Messiah. So she was the one that really shared the scriptures, shared the word, eventually led me again to Christ and that is how my Christian experience started anew. What do you lead your brothers? What do you lead your sisters to do? Do you call them and say, brother, sister, I have found something that can help you. I have found something that can help you to grow in Christ. I have found something that can help you. I have found a book that I need you to read. I have found a a resource that I need you to go through. I have found a church that I want us to start attending. I have found a community, a Christian community that can help us to grow. What exactly have you found that you share with your siblings? For instance, you could share this podcast and say, Oh, I have found something. You could share it with your friends. You could share it with your family. You could share the word, share prayer, share times of encouragement. Just 
make sure that you are sharing something meaningful and impactful with your family and with your friends do i call my siblings my friends and my families my parents to be blessed or do i just leave them and the last part that really touched me was when jesus saw peter and he said you are simon son of john you will be called cephas which is translated peter <laughs> you have to understand that for you to change someone's name you have to have power over the person jesus showed that he clearly had control over peter changing his name from simon to cephas which means peter names are very important we see it in the scripture all the time god changed the name of abraham abraham to abraham god changed sarai to sarah god changed jacob to israel god changed saul to paul we see the instance of many name changes in the bible in fact as i was studying for this podcast i realized that moses changed the name of one of the spies that he was sending to spy the promised land the spy's name was osea son of Nun, and moses changed his name to joshua son of Nun, or yehoshua son of Nun, and osea meant salvation but yehoshua which is joshua meant jehovah saves and that really spoke to me because i never knew that my name joshua was a name that moses changed from osea to yehoshua and that spoke new life to me saying that my name is a declaration that jesus saves my name is a declaration that god saves names are very important and they are very powerful god calls us by many names god calls us blessed god calls us chosen god calls us his own people what names are we calling ourselves are we allowing god to define our names or are we allowing the world to define who we are what name are you calling yourself and where are you finding that name are you calling yourself peter are you calling yourself sad are you calling yourself hopeless are you calling yourself ignorant are you calling yourself a fool or are you calling yourself wise are you calling yourself a child of god are you calling yourself a person of the kingdom what name are you calling yourself what name are others calling you what name has jesus given you so this is where our scriptures come in we know the mind of god through the scriptures and the bible has called us a lot of things for christ he has called us light he has called us the salt of the earth he has called us a royal priesthood if you need help finding these things you can go online there are a lot of good resources available online just search what name is the scripture calling me please let's meditate on these things and let it transform our lives as we say the word of prayer our father we say thank you Thank you because we have heard and we have followed you. Thank you because we have come to learn from you. Thank you because we are constantly finding our own brother and sister, friends and family and we are bringing them to you and they are doing the same for us. We say thank you because you are giving us a new name. Lord, we say that you help us to accept your name in Jesus name. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. I believe you have been blessed by this episode of the podcast. Please follow us on this platform or on wherever you get your podcast. Also, please share with your friends and family so that they can be blessed by it too. Till we meet again, keep seeking, keep searching, keep meditating on God's word and keep on loving your scriptures and keep on loving God. God bless you.